self-discipline and commitment are at least as important as physical strength in the martial arts. And there are some truly remarkable people among the masters of hand-to-hand -hand combat. One of them is Sali Syed. And Zaki visited him at his dojo to discover what has motivated his dedication to the martial arts for some five decades. Sully Syed's path to becoming a grandmaster of the martial arts began in 1965 and eventually led him to Japan where he studied under Kanshu Mas Oyama, a holder of the 10th degree of the black belt in karate. In addition to karate, he has also mastered many other styles of armed and unarmed combat. Whenever I think of the martial arts, I immediately think of Bruce Lee and Jean-Claude Van Damme beating up the baddies. Then my 10-year-old nephew started karate and he informed me of the deeply spiritual side of the art form. It is upon his recommendation that I'm spending some time with Soke Sali Said to find out more about the dual nature of karate. While many Westerners see karate purely as a fighting skill, a Japanese master regarded it as the conflict within oneself or as a lifelong marathon which can be won only through self-discipline, hard training and one's own creative efforts. Okay. Oh. Sally, it's so wonderful to see you again. It's good to see you too. I'm really happy to see you again. Sally, what drew you to martial arts? A few factors. One was that we grew up in a very rough neighborhood. There was a big bullies you saw always come and say they want a side, so they get into the soccer team. And I, was, I was a big mouth. They said, no, no, it's only for us small guys. You know what I mean? The guys would take the ball and stab the ball, and I would jump up again and say, leave our ball, and get a shot in the face and eye, and go home with black eyes. I thought, this has to stop. And a little karate club opened up. I was there, and I started training. And believe it or not, it was like six, seven months later, I had been playing with all the friends again on the street, and the one bully that used to always bully us, and me particularly, came again and asked for a side, and I said to him, no side for you. And he came and he grabbed me, and I hit him. And that was the end of that. At that point of time, I read the book, What is Karate? by the great karate master, Mas Oyama. It was such an amazing book. And my aim and my dream, my goal was, I'm gonna meet this man. On my 21st birthday, I'll be in Japan. And I worked towards that, and I uh, eventually, I celebrated my 21st birthday in Japan and was training with the great Masuyama. What is Karate Do, the way of karate? The way of karate is the way of life. In a nutshell, it's the way of learning how to fight so that you don't have to fight. To me, it's the science, psychology, and philosophy of fighting. Sully, how did you go about becoming a grand master? There was no real plan to become a master. I just, as a young person, I just wanted to train. I loved the training. I loved karate so much I could taste it. The word keiko means practice. And there's a nice saying that says, yaku ren jitoku. Yaku means 100, ren means repetition, jitoku means your nature. After hundreds of thousands of repetitions, the technique becomes part of your nature. 2015, I got my ninth dan, and a few masters came over from overseas and they conferred the rank on me and said, now you've got to change your title to Soke. It signifies that you have started a new tradition. How important is the teacher on a journey like this? He would be the most, or she could be the most important person in your life. You want to learn karate, you have to learn under teachers. All the videos and all the different things that you can pick up on social media is as a ref. You've got to go and do your karate with a teacher. This way you'll be guided. Soke Soli's daughter, Zahra, has followed in her father's footsteps. And this warrior woman has progressed to the fourth dan in karate. As well as being a qualified yoga teacher and life coach. What does the training entail? One is cardiovascular, cardiorespiratory training. That means your heart and lungs must be stimulated enough to be able to keep you in good shape. Two is flexibility. So stretching your limbs, something you should do every day. This way you can prevent aging. Then you've got strength training, and then you've got conditioning training, which means hardening and conditioning the body in a certain way. So I'm actually gonna have a class now, and you can see how this all fits into my class. Thank you. Us.
having traveled the world while learning from some of the most respected martial arts practitioners of contemporary times, Soke Soli Said has become imbued with the discipline, philosophy and tradition that accompany his calling and lifestyle. He has trained and taught in the UK, USA, Japan, India, Australia, New Zealand, Egypt, Zimbabwe and South Africa, passing on his knowledge, skills and thinking to the next generation. Soke, the energy in this room is electrifying. What is the significance of the drum? So the drum in Japanese is called the taiko and it's normally used for opening and closing ceremonies, important uh, events that take place in Japan. Normally it's given to a teacher, a sensei from a temple where it is blessed by the abbot or by the chief monk and then it comes into the dojo and it's always in, found in traditional dojos. So, okay, you have some other interesting pieces here. Each one of them has a significance, something that is important to the martial arts or to one's life. This is called the Daruma Daishi Do. It's used for different things. In Japan, in the New Year's ceremony, they use it. And for example, as you knock it, it always comes back onto its face, you see? So that signifies nana korobi ya oki, or seven times down, eight times up. It's beautiful, you never give up. What are the benefits of karate? So you take a child, the child's concentration will start improving, the child's coordination will improve, and the child's confidence will improve. There's innumerable benefits that you can get, but these are the first signs that we see taking place. So, okay, as a woman, I feel it's so important to be able to defend myself. Please, could you teach me some self-defense tactics? Yes. Let's start you off with picking on your karate dogi, and then we'll work on it. Us. Ah, that was great. <laughs> oh, us. Us. So now we talk about self-defense, right? Let's say, for example, if somebody grabs your hand. So what are you going to do? You don't try to pull that hand out. Uh -huh. Leave the hand there. Okay. Use that hand. You've got two legs and a hand that is still free. Slap the ear, pull the ear out, pa! Okay. Kick the groin, okay. and then I will release it. Now the typical one again is somebody grabs you, so uh -huh. you grab me with two hands on my lapel. Yeah, and you pull me, okay, so it's uh -huh. like this. That's it. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Grab me again. From here, pa! In the eyes. Okay. Right? Just go straight for the eyes. Wow, that's great. And then hit the groin. Okay? So, yeah, yeah. Hey, stay in the eyes. Say it, go for the eyes and hit the groin. Yeah. And then run like hell. There you are. So, okay, what advice do you have from the karate philosophy for all of our viewers out there? For all the viewers out there, anyone and everyone can do karate. What is the legacy you are aiming to create? I would like to see this beautiful art, this marvelous art going to the next generation and the following generation. So it's something that shouldn't stop here. And I think with my family that are involved in, the, in karate, they are going to continue this legacy. So, okay, thank you so much for such an enlightening day. So oh, it's my pleasure, Sakya. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Soke Sali's legacy is rooted in hard work and discipline. It has been a beautiful day learning the spiritual side of karate. And who knew it could be such a zen-like experience?